Hello friends, it's me again and <laughs> I'm just showing you the screen and this is what my video that I made has been doing ever since I posted it. It's still in the processing stage. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to become of that video. It's the most um, precious message that I've done in a long time. It's regarding the return of Jesus Christ. And what does he do when he returns? It's just under an hour long and um, I've been posting it. It's been two days now and it's in the processing stage. Anyway, I don't think it's going to get sort of disrupted in any way. I'm just going to have to wait and see what becomes of that. But meanwhile, I'm going to begin with this message today. And it's regarding eschatology from the Islamic perspective. And I think this is important for us to be aware of when we look at this paradigm regarding eschatology in the biblical sense. When we're talking about the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast kingdom, and what this means when we are when we listen to, let's say, this other perspective regarding the Islamic Antichrist or this Antichrist that will come from a Muslim nation. It's important to understand this other side of um, the perspective in regards to Islam because I will show you today what from from their own sources what they really think about this and also um, in a nutshell how and how we should respond what do we do with it friends I'm going to show you a brief excerpt from this online PDF book It's called the coming final battle and it's going to disclose to us some information I think is really important. So without further ado, because I don't want this video to be very long, I'm going to just start and uh, let's see how far we can go. The coming final battle. Let me read some of this to you, friends. Many Muslims anticipate that the end of days is here or will be here soon. In a 12, 2012 pupil in most of the countries surveyed in the Middle East, North Africa and South Asia, Half or more Muslims believe that they will be personally, um, that they will personally witness, <laughs> if I can speak right now, the appearance of the Mahdi. In Islamic eschatology, which is a study of the end times, the messianic figure known as the Mahdi or the guided one will appear before the day of judgment. This expectation is most common in Afghanistan by 83%, followed by Iraq, 72%, Tunisia, 67 and Malaysia, 62%. That's how many people have this expectation amongst the Muslim community in those nations. Historically, narratives of the apocalypse have occupied a relatively marginal role in Sunni Islam, a distinct form, a distinct, as distinct from Shiism. For Sunnis, the Mahdi is not here yet. For most Shiites, the Mahdi has already been born, but is now hidden, and when he reveals himself, justice will prevail. The 1979 Iranian revolution is considered by some Shiites to be an early sign of the Mahdi's appearance. For both Sunnis and Shiites, and you've heard me talk about this, friends, how um, fragmented and at odds with one another the Muslim community is across the world, the Mahdi's role is, in part, to end the disunity of the Muslim community and to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, who is understood to be a prophet in Islam. Now, I won't go and continue to read more because this would end up being a long video. But that, in a nutshell, is their mindset. Notice, Jesus Christ, in the second coming, according to the Islamic mindset, is to be the coming prophet of Islam. So they deny his death, his resurrection, but yet they believe he's alive and he's returning back as a Muslim. This is why it's so important for Christians in the Christian prophecy land world to understand this other side of the mindset of Muslims. And there are many that believe this, friends. Not only that, there's a lot, a lot of resemblance when we're talking about Bible eschatology and the Islamic eschatology. There's a lot of resemblance. And this is one of the main things that the Lord revealed to me years and years and years ago. 
back in 2002, I would say 2003, 2004 was when I began to take a closer look at Bible prophecy in the old books of the Old Testament, the prophetic books and the words of Jesus Christ. And I was reminded, the Lord reminded me what my dad would tell me about the Mahdi when he would come. And my dad is a Sunni Muslim from Pakistan. So this goes way back. <clears throat> the truth about the Mahdi, this is from Islam, question and answer, Islam Q&A website, a very, very popular and uh, recognizable outfit online. So a question is posed, this is way back in 2003. The question... In the present distress situation, many people, including scholars, are found to talk about the renaissance of Islam and the emergence of Imam Mahdi. I want to ask about two things. First, who is or may be Imam Mahdi and is there any evidence about his possible emergence in the light of the Quran and Hadith? Secondly, what will be the order of occurrence of events before the Qiyamah, including emergence of Imam Mahdi, uh, the the Jal, Gog and Magog, <clears throat> they call it your Juj Majuj, and Jesus. Kindly reply in detail. So the answer comes from the online assigned scholar of Islam to this question. And he says, Imam Mahdi will be a righteous man from among the descendants of Muhammad. I'm going to skip some of the wording here, okay, friends? Who will appear at the end of time. Now, this is, friends, what I'm reading to you is the Islamic perspective of their end times. They believe this. They study it. They look forward to specific signs, just like how you and I would do when we look into the Word of God. And we really are keen to understand the end times. The Muslim community do the same thing. Now, these are of, of the mindset that this belief of the last day <clears throat> is pivotal in order to be a Muslim. You must believe in the last day. Why? Because that is the time in history that Islam is going to be superior above all other religions. Specific to the Christians and the Jews. So when you have a belief system that is so deeply ingrained within Muslims, not every single one, when you have a belief that is so serious regarding the end times and they take it seriously, we need to stop and pay attention and consider this perspective that I share with you regarding the end times, Bible prophecy and why I talk about Islam all the time. This is why. There are other reasons and I'll show you as we go into the biblical scriptures. I want to do a little comparison here as we go along. Let's continue. <clears throat> um, so it's giving a description, <clears throat> excuse me, of who this guy will be, the Mahdi, what his name will be. Um, the sign of his appearance will be widespread corruption and the earth being filled with the wrongdoing and aggression, basically lawlessness will be at a level which will be um, widespread. There are a number of hadith which point to his appearance and attributes being described above. When taken together, these reports reach the level of tawatur, narrated from so many people, by so many people, that it is inconceivable that they could all have agreed upon a lie. So basically saying the, the narrative backing, according to their scriptural text, primarily from the Hadith, is so much that they take it as though it's real, it's true, it's legitimate, they can um, trust what was written in regards to it. Number one, the appearance of the minor importance of the hour, of which how many will not appear in any specific order, this is what they usually say. They give a listing of some of the things that are the signs of the appearing of the Mahdi. Um... Disappearance of righteous people, believers' dreams coming true, neglect of the sunnah, a great deal of lying, a great deal of false testimony, a great deal of sudden death, wishing for death, increase in numbers of the Romans, which is code for Christians in the West, and fighting them, and other signs <clears throat> which are narrated in Hadith from the Prophet. 
The appearance of the Mahdi, who will appear before the Dajjal, and this person is the Islamic Antichrist. They are on guard against him. He is the threat that's coming. Dajjal. The Mahdi Isa, the Islamic Jesus, up when they when they come according to the Islamic mindset, he will be their opponent. And they combining together their forces will defeat him apparently, allegedly, according to the Islamic mindset. <clears throat> and before the descent of Isa, so the Mahdi in the Islamic mind will come before Dajjal and before Isa. Now in the book of Revelation, it talks to us about, let me go there, I'm going to have to do this back and forth thing again. So Revelation 13, it tells us about the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. The beast from the sea is what the Antichrist will uh, form. He's the one who's going to ride this organization of 10 confederation nations the beast but he there is this one person the antichrist the book of daniel calls him the little horn so in revelation 13 it says then i stood on the sand of the sea and i saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns so this beast will be a combination of past empires but with individual rulers all coming together to form this entity which is the beast does that make sense? And on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. Now, I propose to you, this is a form of the uh, caliphate that's coming, a new version. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard to the Grecian Empire. His feet were like the feet of a bear, the Medo-Persian Empire. And his mouth like the mouth of a Babylonian lion empire. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if he had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This proclamation, this boasting of the beast is so great, who can... Um, even be in comparison to the beast who can come against it who can make war with the beast is very much the mindset of isis if you think about how they brag about the islamic caliphate the islamic state muhammad and this is at the um at the foundation of the if you think about these islamic groups these terrorist groups that form at the heart of it is their eschatology. And we need to understand Islamic eschatology to understand why they do what they do, how they do it, and what's their end goal. Their end goal, friends, is Jerusalem. I'll come to that in a moment. So, after this portion of the scripture, and I've read this to you many times, it's going to describe to us how this beast will blaspheme God, our God of the Bible, his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. The beast, when it is here, is going to be against the believers in Jesus Christ, specifically. And it's also going to be against um, Mystery Babylon the Great. To people groups or two entities you could say the beast will be opposed to and ultimately Jesus Christ the lamb and authority was given him over every tribe tongue and nation verse 8 all who dwell on the earth will worship him but it just said that it looked like the lion the leopard and the bear which are regional but yet the world will worship we have many people who hold this ideology across the world so I don't know how it's going to look particularly we'll have to find out when we get there friends and these scriptures will make make more sense now if we carry on and read the beast from the earth enter your false prophet it describes the islamic version of jesus christ who comes as a prophet to break the cross and kill the pigs who does the bidding of the first beast which is the beast from the sea the mahdi you could say 
Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So we know the spirit, the agenda behind this false prophet is satanic, Luciferian, from the dragon. But he will look peaceful, like a lamb, like Jesus. And he exercises all the authority, you see, he will exercise all the authority of the first beast that came up out of the sea in his presence. So they will be together at the same time. The beast, the Antichrist and the false prophet will be present together in one time. Whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. I'm reading the, um, the scripture here, friends, to let you know that when we want to validate, to check out, to test things, even Islamic eschatology, where do we go to do it? We go to the word of God. The word of God is the only trustworthy source in regard in the end times. We don't, basically, we don't look at the Islamic paradigm, the Islamic end time perspective, the Islamic scriptures and put trust and faith in those. We look at them, we consider them, we analyze and we think, huh, but what does the word of God say? And then we go back to the word of God. Please remember, you must always do this when it comes to the study of the end times with any theory that is out there. Listen, observe, examine, test it with the word of God. That's our foundation. That's the ultimate truth. We take anything that is outside of the biblical narrative with a grain of salt, but we consider it and we, we ponder and think, hmm, interesting. Remember, Satan is crafty, very cunning, and he plots and he schemes things way in advance, you guys. So this is showing me his cunningness, how crafty he is, that he has set this whole system of Islam up for the end times. Because he needs an army, he needs a sidekick, he needs certain things to fall into place before the return of Jesus. He needs vehicles, he needs instruments. Just like how you and I want to offer us ourselves up as instruments for righteousness, vessels for honour, Satan is looking for his own vessels, you guys, to fill those vessels with himself. And these people who believe in the Islamic paradigm are preparing <clears throat> to be used by Satan. They don't know that. They don't understand it, of course. So let's just keep them in prayer. Anyway, I can leave the rest of this in the description box. Remember, friends, please check out my description box under my videos for extra information and also for the links to the sources that I read and share with you. Um, the appearance of the Dajjal. For more detail about its emergency questions, okay. The appearance of Yajuj and Majuj. One indication that Yajuj and Majuj will emerge at the time of Isa is the Hadith. So they also have this belief of Gog and Magog. But it's totally different to how the Bible um, explains that whole event that is coming in the future. It's totally different. But I'm going to leave this link in the description because of time. Wikipedia link. Hadith of Jesus praying behind Mahdi. His role, friends, the Islamic Jesus. I hate saying that. Let's just call him Isa. Isa and his position in rank <clears throat> is inferior to the Mahdi. He will be under a role or position of subjugation, surrender, because he will give his allegiance to the Mahdi. What does that say about how Islam considers Jesus? Hadith of Jesus praying behind Mahdi refers to a collection of Hadith related to the prophecy that Jesus will follow Mahdi's lead in Salat, in prayer after he descends. Remember, the Muslim world, the community of Islam, the Ummah, <clears throat> this is their last day belief system. 
just as important as the last days Bible eschatology, Bible prophecy is to you and to myself. This is how important it is to them. So we are at loggerheads, complete on the opposite side of the fence here. And Satan has set this thing up. But the Lord God, in his wonderful wisdom, his counsel, he knows exactly what's happening. He knows. He knows the end from the beginning. So it doesn't take him by surprise. <clears throat> Which makes the the fact that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, when he comes in judgment with great wrath, and I pray to the Lord that that video I just did, it hurry like it quickly processes itself and you can listen to it. I'll go through so many wonderful scriptures regarding what Jesus does when he returns. It's explaining to us why he comes with such wrath, why he will make his enemies his footstool. Who are the enemies of Jesus? These guys and the nations that will give allegiance to them. Let's carry on, read a little bit of this. Mahdi is the 12th Imam for Shia and Salah and the Islamic practice of worship of God, which Muslims perform five times a day. The prophecy is narrated in numerous Hadith collections. A total of 29 Hadiths relate to the return of Jesus and his prayer with Mahdi's lead. Okay, moving on. What have I got here now? Right, so I, I put this up here just to give you an, an idea of the vast volume content material that is available in the Islamic world regarding this subject matter. It's huge. So if you type in Imam Mahdi and Isa Islam and just look at the imagery, you get these kind of depictions. And I want to pose this question, why is it that these characters are in battle attire? Riding on horses with flags. Summoning an army with flags. <clears throat> Why is that? Over here is uh, Isa and Mahdi. It could be the other way around. He's all in white. That's probably the Mahdi. That's probably Isa. On horses in battle mode. Why? Why is that? Remember, this is what they believe. This is what they believe. This is how they view the world, friends. Eschatology is a big deal in Islam. And I don't know why a lot of these other channels that talk about Islam, exposing Islam, they don't talk about it. I'm going to start talking about it. And I would welcome Muslims to come leave comments under my videos. And to challenge, challenge the content that I'm putting out there with their own text. Because I guarantee you, they understand that this is exactly what they're preparing for. This is their depiction of their saviour, the, their messiah, Mahdi, and Easter, who's coming to fight the Dajjal. Only Satan could have concocted such a thing as this. Signs of the arrival of Imam Mahdi, again in that one. These are images from various videos, because there's tons of videos on YouTube. Mahdi there in um, battle mode and he's got a black flag. Again, another one, I, it reads, I am Allah's remainder in his earth and the avenger on his enemies. Imma Muhammad al-Mahdi, battle attire, all kitted out for war. How do we fight an ideology that is so ingrained in their text, especially when it comes to the end times? You can't. You can't fight that, friends. Our warfare, remember, is spiritual. We fight with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Not with that kind of Islamic spirit, that Islamic sword. What else does the false prophet do? He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. This false prophet, when he returns, he's going to do a lot of the, um, he's going to be the right hand man of the Antichrist to do his bidding. 
that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So killing people is right up their street. Causing people to be subdued, to be dominated is exactly what the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to do. But there's going to be signs and wonders that people are going to be convinced. He will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And there comes the 666. All who dwell on the earth, but the beast. Yes, Fifi. <laughs> Hold on a moment, friends. But the beast is going to be a unit, a system of governance, friends, over the regions of where the leopard was, where the bear was, Medo-Persian, Grecian, and the Babylonian region. You see how the word of God is pinpointing a specific geographic location, which is why I talk about geopolitics. Moving on. So much to go over. Now, this particular website called the thekilafa.com. I haven't been on here for a while. I used to read this stuff many years ago. Because as soon as I realized the Lord was showing me about this threat that's coming and it's going to be the Antichrist Beast's kingdom and the false prophets coming out from this system, I used to play, like, pay close attention to what they talk about, the gatherings that they hold, the meetings, their conferences, the material they put out. I used to read about it. So I want to show you something. So on their About Us section... On kilafa.com, it tells you what they're about. Now, let me see if I can just enlarge in the text. Because I really want you to read it along with me. Okay, friends? Since it was founded in 1996, kilafa.com has earned a reputation for being the most foremost Islamic, political and ideological website in the English language. Kilafa.com is dedicated to articulating the case for Islam as an ideology that provides solutions for all human problems and all human relationships. <laughs> it is our belief that Islam must be understood ideologically that deals with individual and societal problems. At the forefront of the call of Islam or Dawah, today is the case of representing Islam as a challenge to the current chaos. These guys are banned in several nations, you guys. Very similar mindset to the Muslim Brotherhood. Where was I? As a challenge to the current chaos, inequality, despotism, international disorder, all a consequence of Western liberalism, capitalism. They just tell you straight up what they, pro what they have a problem with. Since the 3rd of March, 1924, play close attention to this. The Khilafa state was destroyed. What Khilafa state are we talking about? The Ottoman Caliphate. The Ottoman Caliphate, under the Ottoman dynasty of the Ottoman Empire, was the last Sunni Islamic Caliphate of the late medieval and early modern era. During the period of the Ottoman growth, Ottoman rulers claimed caliphal authority since 1517, since Salim I, through conquering a unification of Muslim lands, history is going to repeat itself, became the defender of the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, which further strengthened the Ottoman claim to caliphate in the Muslim world since 1517, also Jerusalem. Going back. Let's continue. The Khilafah state was destroyed, marking the end of an illustrious era of Islamic rule. That was when Islam ruled that part of the world. By Sharia. Since then, the dark shadow of the West has engulfed the world. They absolutely detest the West, you guys. So all the missionaries that were sent out from the West into this region of the Middle East, Africa, Asia, they detested it. We assert without compromise that it is the only by the establishment of the Khilafah state, like the Ottomans, that the practical solutions of Islam can once again provide a real alternative for the entire world. 
The clash of civilizations first discussed by Samuel Huntington is real and inevitable. We endorse the notion that there is a civilizational difference between Islam and the West. And the problem for the West is Islam. And the problem for Islam is the West. Do you see that? This is what they think. The only way they can fix the problems in the West is by infiltrating and overtaking it, which is why we have so many of the Islamic communities outnumbering certain pockets of communities within the host nations where they reside. Let's continue. By arguing this, we also maintain Islam as a universal ideology came for all of mankind, humankind, Muslim and non-Muslim. As such as it is only Islam that serves as a Rahmah, mercy for all mankind. As the Western ideology dominates the world today, the only challenge to it must come from Islam. And this is the challenge to the church, to Israel, to the Christians and to the Jews as well. As well as the secularists and the humanists. Notice what's the debate, what's the great debate of our time right now? What are we going to do with Islam? We've tried appeasing it. We've tried to just turn around and look the other way. We've tried to cut deals with the Islamic nations, getting rich by them, i.e. Saudi Arabia. But the problem still persists. I wonder why. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Let me continue reading a little bit of this. The demise of the Ottoman Caliphate took place because of a slow erosion of power in relation to Western Europe and because of the end of the Ottoman state in consequence of the partitioning of the Ottoman Empire by the League of Nations mandate. There's so much to read. I'm going to have to put all this in the description, friends, because I don't want to be uploading this video forever. So when the article, when it said, let me go back for a moment. The Khilafah state 1924, was destroyed. The sick man of Europe, remember? Is, if I can bring it up, this one here. That dominated the region after Rome. Remember Rome included Eastern Byzantine Empire. This beast came, these are all beasts. This beast came and took over, but it died. It received a mortal or a deadly wound and it's gonna be healed. So now we're having a situation in our time where the Islamic Caliphate is now rising, but it's gonna be different. And absolutely the word of God is so on point. It is different already. There's going to be a mixture in this caliphate, you guys. There's going to be Sunnis and Shiites involved. What did I have up here? The relationship between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. To give you an idea of the conflict that has existed between these two and why it's important in the Islamic eschatological mindset. Historically, the relationship between Turkey and Saudi Arabia have always varied between cooperation and distrust to uncertainty and reapproachment. This is because of the historical enmity between the two nations dated from the Ottoman era. Who is the rightful heir of the caliph or the caliphate? This is what they argue about. This is why a lot of the wars, the blowing up of each other's mosques is happening in Iraq and it has been going on for ages. The Sunni and the Shiite conflict. The House of Saud, you can hear the cats in the front fighting. The House of Saud has assumed the role of guardianship of the Meccan shrine, right? Now these other um, Islamic nations, Turkey, Sufis, Sunni and the Iranian Shiites dislike that, that how does Saudi Arabia being an in British instalment of a monarchy, how had they assumed guardianship? How dare they? And so forth. It's really complicated, but it, you can simplify it <laughs> if possible. 
In the 19th century, the Ottomans entered into a serious conflict, you guys, with the House of Saud. Did you know that? The first Saudi state which resulted to the Ottoman-Saudi war. The war is seen in Saudi Arabia as the first attempt to create an independent state from the Ottoman Empire, the Caliphate. While in Turkey, it is often considered to be the war against the Sunni movement. This led to a brutal military reprisal by the Ottoman rulers, which saw the destruction of the first Saudi state and the executions of many religious leaders of the Saudis, which is why today Saudi Arabia bans Muslim Brotherhood, while Turkey welcomes them and promotes them. Erdogan is like the, what's his name, like the banner. The guy who um, created the Muslim Brotherhood, he's lucky he's assumed that role. For this reason, there is an internal enmity between the Turks and the Saudis, which is reflected by recent revisionist campaigns in both countries. Anyway, I'll link this in the description. Very interesting. Now, Daniel, chapter 2. The Word of God is showing us that when this beast part of the image because this is a beast the image of this statue um, is the antichrist the word of god is showing to us what this thing in the final phases will look like now let's read from verse 31 so daniel was speaking to nebuchadnezzar giving him the interpretation of the image he saw you O king remember nebuchadnezzar babylonian right were watching and behold a great image Remember what it says in Revelation 13, the image, image of the beast. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze. In fact, let me show you if I have the image. There's the image right there. And let me read from my Bible as you just take a look at this image. Hopefully you can hear me, friends. I'm trying to be mindful of not speaking away from the mic, but remaining close to it. <clears throat> the Word of God, oh, the Lord is so amazing, you guys. I just love him, how he does things. Now, in this day and age, we're beginning to like fully understand, better understand, let's say, what was written back then. Because we're approaching that time now, aren't we? We're approaching the end of the end days and so what was written centuries ago is going to make sense to us now friends this is so exciting okay where was i so you O king were watching and behold a great image this great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome this image's head was of fine gold its chest and arms of silver belly and thighs of bronze its legs of iron its feet partly of iron, partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands. People think that that iron was Rome. So I found this image because I agree with it. <laughs> it was the Islamic Caliphate, friends. Rome, as bad as it was, was an appeaser. It was tolerant. It was so more tolerant than the Islamic coming future beast would ever be. But remember, they were reluctant to hand Jesus over for crucifixion. Remember that. But everything happened according to God's wisdom, his purposes. His counsel alone stands. Let's carry on. Verse 33. Its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron, partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Jesus Christ is that stone, that rock. And when he comes, when his kingdom comes, remember that stone becomes a mountain. Where's the image of the stone? They don't have it on here. Oh. When that image is attacked, it's going to bring down the entire beast. And just like the word of God tells us in Revelation chapter 13, about what the beast will look like 
is describing to us the whole region of the Islamic world, friends. Jesus Christ, when he returns, is going to come against the Islamic world. The word of God is amazing. It's telling us where to look. Does that make sense? Let's move on. Daniel 7. Daniel 7 tells us about the beasts. And I have an image here of the beasts now. Daniel 7. This is remarkable. It's just... This really encourages my faith, you guys. When I look at the Word of God and see how accurate it is, how exciting, how full of wisdom it is, I get excited about it. So in Daniel chapter 7, I'm going to read from verse 4. So this is Daniel's vision of the four beasts, right? And the angel is going to help him with the interpretation in chapter 7 and chapter 8 of Daniel. Please read these scriptures in their context. I'm going to read from verse 4 of Daniel chapter 7. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5. And suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear, was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. You see, some portions of the scripture of the same narrative gives us more detail. Some gives us less detail. But we have to read them all together in layers. Verse 6. After this I looked and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird, the beast had four heads and dominion was given to it. And after this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. That does not describe the Romans, it describes the Ottoman Turks, Islam. It had huge iron teeth, it was devouring, which is exactly what it did, De breaking in pieces, which is exactly what the Islamic caliphate did and trampling the residue with its feet perfect description it was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns that right there that detail regarding those 10 horns is telling us this is going to be an end time beast but end times beast doesn't just pop up out of the blue does it friends it doesn't just like one day it's not there and one day bam it's right there it's been working in the background for centuries. This is how Satan's been plotting and scheming to do this, you guys. So he gets Muhammad to start this cult to oppose Jesus Christ and to oppose his return. They hate the Christians and the Jews' belief system. Something else I want to show you. IslamICity.org has this. Jesus, the return. Remember, it's Isa. I, would, I just wish they would stop using the name Jesus. The establishment of God's nation under Jesus. This is from the horse's mouth. This is the Islamic mindset. The killing of the false Messiah, Dajjal, which is what they call the Antichrist, will traumatize the Christian's and Jews who had followed him. For it will finally reveal to them that he was not what he had claimed to be. Remember? What does Islam teach about Jesus? He didn't die. He wasn't crucified. He wasn't resurrected. The prophet of Islam, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, said, talking about Muhammad, The son of Mary will soon descend. Sorry, hold on. Oh, go away. Oh, this website's got so many things on it, you guys. The son of Mary will soon descend among you and will judge justly according to the law of God not the Torah the Sharia you remember the Antichrist will seek to change times and laws and seasons it's according to the Sharia not the Noahide <laughs> the Sharia 
The son of Mary will soon descend among you and will judge justly. Can you hear those children screaming outside? He will break the cross and kill the pig. Let's see what this guy says about that. The breaking of the cross may be figurative, figurative <laughs> or literal. The destruction of erected idols in churches and tearing down of crosses, which has been going on in France. I wonder who's been doing that. From their steeples, as well as forbidding the use of personal crosses as symbols of religion, or the destruction of the myth that he was executed by the Romans on a cross at the instigation of the Jews. You see, they consider that whole thing a myth, you guys. Antichrist. Oh, I'm so sorry about those children screaming. Oh, my Lord, help me. I'll have to speak louder. Likewise, the killing of the pigs may be both literal and figurative. Figurative. My goodness, I can't say that word today. Literally conducting and campaign to kill all pigs so the consumption of the meat becomes impossible, allowing them to be killed or simply reimposing the ban God made since the time immemorial on eating their flesh effectively, forcing pig farmers to get... This is so absolute absurd, so stupid. I said that my understanding of what they mean is code for killing the Christians when it says breaking the cross and killing the pigs, meaning the Jews. In effect, two of the mainstays of widespread Christian practice will be removed. Eating pigs and having crosses erected, really? Indicating that the religion as taught by modern Christians would henceforth be defunct and marking a return to the religion as originally intended Islam. Talks about Gog and Magog. This whole article is really interesting. It tells you what they really think about the end times. And this might not be every Muslim's understanding of the end times, just like every other Christian Bible prophecy teacher's interpretation of biblical end times is not every, every what every Christian believes, okay? But it's, it's a major chunk of what they believe. I'll put this link in the description. Moving on. Here is an excerpt of a written book article it's called nationstates.net and it's all about what the caliphate would look like when it's finally here they're working on it so anyway so all the landmass in green is where islam will dominate and rule according to the sharia not the torah the capital city of the caliphate can you see that what does it say al quds jerusalem and i've said that before in my videos that when um, the caliphate, the Antichrist beast kingdom is formed, its focus will turn to Jerusalem after it's dealt with um, mystery Babylon. But Jerusalem is at the heart of it, friends. Why? Why is that? Al-Quds. Al-Quds. Imagery, very popular online. Oh, Muslim armies, I told you. This is about conquest, subjugation, domination war they're looking and preparing for it does it explain isis do you know does this explain al-qaeda <clears throat> and the, all the various hamas and the hezbollahs of our world this is what i'm saying you can't fight this mindset what our western leaders need to understand this is an ideology a spiritual um, deeply ingrained belief system you can't fight that with weapons you guys it's not going to happen the word of god is telling us this beast is coming is coming now we have to be prepared and not be taken by surprise when so many people are saying islam is dying is failing that their numbers of apostasy are going up and up and up when the word of god is telling us no the beast is forming it's rising and it's going to be more monstrous than all the other beast kingdoms that control Jerusalem ever were. Just think about that for a minute. What does this thing say? O oh, Muslim armies, al Quds, the capital of the Khilafah, Rashida calls upon you. Why can't they leave Jerusalem alone? What's with Jerusalem? Because Satan knows that's where Jesus Christ is returning to set up his kingdom. So it would make sense that Satan will go for Jerusalem. What other business does he have with Jerusalem, you guys? Think about it. What army in this world is preparing to capture 
dominate that whole region. Another thing that you find on the internet, in their media, when they have conferences and they have meetings, stuff they hand out. Oh, who believe? This is dangerous. This is worse than Marxism, socialism. Our Allah is one. Our Kalima is one. Our Quran is one. Why? Because it has a spiritual belief system behind it. So it's deeply ingrained within them. Our Quran is one. Our Rasul is one. Our Kaaba is one. Our Ummah is one. What is this? This is like the creed of Islam. Their God, their creed, their book, their prophet, the Kaaba, the Ummah, the community, the Church of Islam. Then why are we not one? They can only become one when this guy shows up with Isa as his sidekick. Because we do not have one Amir. Who's the one Amir? He's the one prince over the Islamic Ummah. The Mahdi. And when he comes, he will resolve our differences in the light of the Quran and Sunnah, protect our lives, property and honour, shapes our lives in accordance with the Sharia, spreads his message of the Prophet to every corner of the world, implements Islam and its system. You hear me talk about the system of Islam. It's a system. And who liberates humans from slavery of human beings to slavery of Allah. I want to make them all slaves of Allah. Okay, something else I want to share with you. Another meme. These are not just fancy memes that are floating around. No, this is a part of their belief system, friends. Am I getting the point across now? Jerusalem will become the capital of the Khilafa. So how can there be a two-state solution? Possibly a one-state solution, but it won't be the Jewish nation state being the one state according to the islamic mindset you see which further infuriates many of the islamic leaders when saudi arabia the uae bahrain sudan whatever enter into alliances with israel because the islamic eschatology teaches they are to be dominant over this place so how are the jewish state leaders entering into alliances with the Arabians how in their mindset this is how they think let me read what's written there this matter the Khilafa will continue after me in Medina then move to Al-Sham Iraq then to the peninsula then to Iraq then to the city no that's uh, Syria right Al-Sham then to the city then to Beit Al-Maqdis so if it reaches Beit al-Maqdis, then it would have reached its natural resting place. And no people will remove it, i.e. the capital of the Khilafah from their land will ever get it back again for, for them to be the capital again. Beit al-Maqdis. Right. So what is Beit al-Maqdis? Because if it reaches Beit al-Maqdis, then it would have reached its natural resting place. And no people who remove it from their land will ever get it back again for them to be the capital again. So this is the end goal for the Khilafa, the capital. Every state has a capital city, right? Type in Beit al-Maqdis location, what do you get? Al-Aqsa Mosque. Al-Aqsa Mosque, located in the old city of Jerusalem, is the third holiest site in Islam, but really it's their first holiest site. They tell us it's the third. But why is it in their end time, their last day narrative, it becomes the number one focus for the Islamic world? Why? Because Jesus Christ is returning there. Uh, do you get it now, friends? Do you see? In which country Beit al Maqdis is located? Jerusalem. Beit al Maqdis or Beit al Maqdis, Hebrew name, Beit Maqdish for the temple in Jerusalem. Pinpoint, bam, right there. Is an Arabic name in reference to the temple and semantically extended as a common designation for Jerusalem in Islamic sources. Do you understand the threat? Am I making this clear to you? I've got so much more to share. How long is this video? Oh my goodness, you guys. It's 54 minutes. Oh.
the word of God. The word of God. Verse 9. Here is the mind, Revelation chapter 17, verse 9 reads, Here is the mind which has wisdom. Holy Spirit, please help us. Heavenly Father, please grant to us the wisdom of the spirit of understanding, of knowledge and of wisdom. Father, please help us. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, these kingdoms, where the woman sits, Islam, dominates those regions where those kingdoms were once rulers. Spiritually, she has a hold over them. Remove Islam for the equation, you don't you have a completely different region entirely. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seventh and is going to perdition. Is of the seventh. Remember friends what I said? That one. Let's go back. Where's the scripture? The ten horns which you saw are ten kings have received no kingdom as yet but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind. And they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make jihad, will make war with the lamb. And the lamb will overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings. To the Islamic mindset, the lamb is their dajjal. And those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. I put the volume up on the piano because the noise outside. I'm sorry about that. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are multitudes, peoples, nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts. Remember, remember friends, for God, verse 17, has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. I've, got, I've done videos on that, friends. Article time. I want to show you something. Biden... It says, cast a spell on Arabia's shifting sands. Look what it says. This was December the 1st, a couple of days ago. I'm going to have to put this in the description because it's, it's really well, well written article. So much in here I want to tell you about. The controversial meeting between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Neom you remember, I've done videos about Neom City. A mega city under development on the Red Sea coast. On November 22nd, drew world attention away from the 2020 Group of 20, the G20 summit, hosted in Riyadh by King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. In normal circumstances, it is preposterous for a crown prince to usurp the media limelight. But it is improbable that MBS acted defiantly. The G20 was important for King Salman and MBS for the latter, even more so as the event held the potential to showcase Saudi Arabia as a young, vibrant society transforming under his personal supervision. However, a phone call King Salman made on the eve of the G20 summit to Turkish President Erdogan was an even more exceptional gesture than the meeting at Neom. Yeah, groundbreaking. The two countries have a deeply troubled relationship, like I just described to you, over the brutal murder of journalist Kama Khashoggi. That's just a recent little fracture in their relationship. In fact, the trial in absentee of 20 Saudi officials was to resume in Istanbul on November 25th. I'm going to skip all this. Where's the bit that I'm going to...
According to the Turkish reader of the conversation between King Salman, remember not his son but the king himself, the elderly chap, and Erdogan on November 20, there was a sub substantive exchange on Turkey, Saudi Turkish ties. It said the relations between Turkey and Saudi Arabia were discussed and views on the G20 leaders summit whose term chair is Saudi Arabia this year, were exchanged. President Erdogan King Salman agreed on keeping channels of dialogue open in order for the bilateral relations to be enhanced and for issues to be settled. They're going to make deals with Saudi Arabia, regardless of how much they hate, detest, and have this ancient enmity existing between them. Because she's a harlot. She controls them. They have respect to a degree of Saudi Arabia because of Islam. Islam pulls the strings. Does this make sense? Spiritually. I'm going to put the thing in the in the description. What's the Biden information? Biden and his nominees for Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan have signed unequivocally that a dramatic shift in the US Middle East policy can be expected, which would include, among others, more pressure on Saudi Arabia and Egypt over human rights, a mission to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Everything's going to happen according to God's will. Remember that, friends? God, it's God's will that it comes to pass, okay? An end to the war in Yemen. A good look at the rushed sale of F-35 stealth aircraft to the U uh, UAE by the Trump administration a tough line on Turkey's interventionist policies in the region, and a relaunch of attempts which, we, with less concession for Netanyahu to bring Palestinian and Israeli officials back to the negotiating table. When it comes to Saudi Arabia, Blinken has publicly rebuked Trump's cosy relationship with MBS and Egyptian President Sisi. Blinken said Trump had basically given a blank check to pursue a disastrous set of policies, including the war in Yemen, but also the murder of Khashoggi. In geopolitical terms, the US will move in concert with its European allies to stabilize conflict areas in the Middle East by making moves towards ceasefires and peace deals in Yemen, Libya and Syria, which play huge roles in end times Bible prophecies. Saudi-Israeli relations, the curious case of a Neom meeting denied. Neom at heart of the, these two having discussions. I can't read the whole thing. I'm going to put it in the description. I've talked about this subject at length. Find it under my playlist called Islam, Antichrist and Mystery Babylon. Please find it. In particular, which video do I want to show you? This one here, Mystery Babylon Revealed and Rising Now. And Revelation 17, Woman and the Beast Explained. And Mystery Babylon is connected to Baal worship. Hence, I've got the crescent moon there. Please check that playlist out. Neom. What's the deal with Neom, eh? Do I have my speaker still on? Let me just check. You see, they had a secret meeting. Think about this, you guys. Israel, Saudi Arabia, Neom. And I've spoken about this before. This is what's going to bring them into unity. So you this is a promo. You can look at these ancient hills and see nothing. Promo for Neom. Or you can see nothing to hold you back. No set ways of thinking. No restrictions. No divisions. No excuses. Just endless potential. This is the blank page you need to write humanity's next chapter, Neon. Over 25,000 square kilometers of inspiration, with room for your biggest ideas. A part of the world set aside for those who want to change the world. A land created to free people from stress. A place where pioneers and thinkers and doers can exchange ideas and get things done. A startup the size of a country that will change the way we live and work forever. Healthier, happier, with more time for the things that really matter. A truly global culture from every place and background you can imagine. 
that can show the rest of the planet how it's done. With energy that flows from the sun and wind, neighborhoods that can feed and clean themselves, technologies that make life everything it can be. This is where we can prepare together for the next era of human progress. Some will look at these ancient hills and see nothing, but the rest of the world will know that this is where a new way of living began. Discover Neo. Right. So they're having secret discussions about this. <clears throat> but yet Saudi Arabia bans Muslim Brotherhood. What does the Muslim Brotherhood think about all of this, you guys? What does Turkey think about all of this? In one picture, to answer that question, is this picture in front. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. This is what the Muslim Brotherhood think about Saudi Arabia. And I guarantee you this is the mindset behind Erdogan. <laughs> Mahdi Dajjal Isa, another Islamic artistry depicting their end time paradigm. That one eye character is the Dajjal. They connect him to the Illuminati, the Triangle, the Pyramid, blah, blah, blah. But on your left, you have Isa. On your right, you have the Mahdi. And just the whole depiction of this is the coming Dajjal, who, them gonna, who they will fight, overcome, and establish Islamic rule, with the capital being Jerusalem. So remember, take the Islamic eschatology with a grain of salt and go back to the word of, word of God, the Bible. Read those prophetic scriptures like I keep sharing with you, friends. It's very good to be repetitive with those scriptures because you begin to see what the Lord is revealing to us as a habit, reading them over and over and over again. So when we have these other perspectives on the end times, and I know a lot of it is fantastic, a lot of hard work has gone into those um, studies, those videos out there in the Christian prophecy land world. We need to come back to the Word of God and at least consider what I'm saying with you. Please at least consider it. This fits all the pieces. The other views, ugh, I don't know, they don't fit. If you type in Mahdi Isa Islam Dajjal in Google, <coughs> excuse me, or in YouTube, Check out some of their videos. Listen to what they tell you. And there's a lot of that content online. The Islamic Muslims, Muslim videos out there. The Jal versus Mahdi and Isa. Like a battle, right? The battle of Imam Mahdi against the Jal. Gog and Magad, the Jal Mahdi. The Mahdi, the Jal and the Messiah. The Mahdi and the Jal. Who is Imam Mahdi? How, why don't we talk about this, you guys? The Islamic world, this this theme, it dominates um, their traffic. A lot of their traffic is regarding the end times. This one particular guy is the, is his Sufi, Sheikh Imran Hussain. Very popular, very, very popular, very highly regarded. I listen to him occasionally when I have time, which is not a lot. He talks about his understanding of the Islamic eschatology narrative, but he holds the view, uh, oh, he's also um, in a disagreement with what happened in history past with the Ottoman Empire, he disagrees with it. He disagrees with what took place. He's of the opinion that there's coming an alliance. I'll play you a little clip. I don't know where I paused it, but I'll play a little clip. Permission to fight. This is now a command. What's wrong with you? Then you do not stand up, rise up and fight in the way of Allah. Anyway, I'll put the video in the description for your further study and research his 
written a piece of work here on his website, imranhossein.org, and it's titled, Neither Friends Nor Allies. The Quran firmly prohibits Muslim friendship and alliance with a Jewish Christian alliance. Did you see that? The Quran firmly prohibits Muslim friendship and alliance with a Jewish Christian alliance. So when the Jews and the Christians are allies, that's when Muslims are forbidden from entering in and being the third party in this alliance. However, the view that Imran Hussein holds is that there is coming a future Christian and Muslim alliance before the Mahdi and Isa turn up. And I believe that is a part of the forsaking of the Holy Covenant, which many will do. St. Paul also talks to us in uh, Thessalonians regarding the great falling away before the man of sin is revealed. What's the falling away? It's the great apostasy. I'll link this article in the description. <clears throat> it's very interesting. And um, again, it gives you a glimpse into their mindset. Um, why did I have that there? I can't remember why I put that there. Okay, my video is still processing. <laughs> Friends, it's so important to understand the Word of God, Bible prophecy, because we're able to understand what's taking place in our world today. These guys, these people who are out there of this mindset who want to bring all these nations under the rule of Islam, with the capital city being Jerusalem, should get our attention. It ought to. We need to understand what is taking place in the Muslim world, what's really behind these terrorist organizations what is their end goal what do they want they want the world to submit under the rule of islam to prepare the way for mahdi and isa whereas you and i are preparing for the return of our king jesus who's also coming to jerusalem something to think about isn't it friends i'll be back again soon and hopefully by this time my video regarding the return of jesus christ will be uploaded oh lord please please help <laughs> and I'm going to post this now and this is going to take me two hours so by the time you see it it'll be later today which is the 3rd of December 2020 I love you all so much I thank you please share my messages help me reach a wider audience when you share because that is what helps me reach more people it really does help I thank you I love you the Lord be with you stay vigilant you guys wise as serpents gentle as doves